grab it here. Yeah, rust. Uh, not the type of rust you think. Actually, rust. Um, it's a um, programming language. And, um, give a little bit of a background of how it was developed and, and where it, where it comes from. Uh, this I stole from Wikipedia, but I've summarized it uh, to keep it short. Um, it was created by a software developer grade on Huawei. I'm sorry, I probably mispronounced the name. Um, and he created it as a personal project first, working at Mozilla Research in 2006. And then he got his employer to start sponsoring it in 2009. And the first stable release was out in 2015. And then I just want to emphasize the fact that Rust wasn't that <laughs> great in the in the very beginning, because what they what they did is that they, uh, for example, they re-implemented the compiler in Rust itself when they got Rust working up to a certain level. So, so they replaced the original compiler that was used to build the compiler, and they also introduced several. Um, source code breaking changes so if you've written rust code and then you they they clicked up the version of rust then suddenly you couldn't compile your code and you had to do lots of changes but anyway the the it stabilized and um in 2022 an interesting thing happened it was one of the first programming languages was allowed to exist in the linux kernel development tree uh, in addition to assembler and c and um, uh, and the interesting thing with Rust is it doesn't actually enforce a specific programming paradigm, but it, um, it it's mostly influenced by paradigms of functional programming. Um, and then there's a side comment: it also supports object-oriented pro <laughs> program. Um, and then I also read an interesting comment that Rust is targeted at frustrated C++ developers and emphasizes features such as safety, control of memory layout, and concurrency. Uh, safety in Rust includes the guarantees of memory safety, type safety, and lack of data races. And um, I'm just wondering if the C++ developers were first frustrated and then they were introduced to Rust, or was it that they got introduced to Rust and then they were frustrated. <laughs> I'm sorry, but moving across language language barriers if you're not an open-minded um, full-stack programmer is very difficult. So if you are, a, uh, I, I would argue that if you're a dedicated C++ uh, developer, you would have a, <coughs> a relatively hard time digging Rust. Uh, you would have to um, adapt your your mindset and then we're getting into this controversy that exists um, in the kernel uh, Linux kernel community with um, low-level C programmers <coughs> not really digging the rust logic being introduced and the, and the, 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 the guidelines that rust lives under you know, when it's uh, it's included and developed within the kernel space <coughs> and uh, yeah, I can I can understand if you're a low level C developer with all the tricks and tri tips you've been using for the last 25 years, and then suddenly somebody comes in and says, "Oh, now we're going to introduce a memory safe, uh, intrinsically memory safe <laughs> environment to work in." And you, you feel like you're being put in prison, like <laughs> probably for the most. Of which is unfair, of course, because you know C and Rust have they have they have different paradigms of being able to handle things, and um, you know Rust was built up from the basis of being able to be a systems programming that is like I said all the safety features. I must emphasize that Rust is not the first system development language that has been on the market. I I tried to look up a few lists, but then I thought uh, rabbling off those is not really worth it because um, it it seemed to be the information I was reading, at least on Wikipedia, it seems to be a little of personal choice which one one considers a system programming language and 
what one doesn't consider so uh, but anyway, I'll leave it, leave it at that, that the Rust is definitely not the first programming language that tried to be a system programming I mean, one could argue that, um, oh, I'm going to get so much hate for this. Uh, like, raw C++ and raw C, by definition, are not, basically, not system programming language if they are misused. Because you, you can very much create code in C++ and C. <laughs> it's totally not reliable system programming code. <laughs> so there's the, the, you, you lack the, the guide fences to, you know, to protect you. And that, of course, what Rust tries to introduce is that it puts in place guide rails. So that when you're doing system programming, then you, Rust helps you stay in, in, in within those guide rails and, and, and prevents you from making the... <sighs> often very common and horrible mistakes that you can make in both C++ and C if you're not programming according to the system programming paradigm with those programming languages. Um, yeah, moving on. So anyway, for the purposes of this demonstration, you need to download two pieces of software. The first one is um, my uh, Visual Studio code, and um, I'll put the links in the comments also. And um, then you also need to go and get the um, uh, the Rust uh, package and install the um, development uh, the development tools for Rust. So what I'll do is I'll put the um, this code package in you know, on my GitHub site and put a link to it so you can go and get it. I just thought we'd like go through and have a look at what the main components of the skeleton are and, and um, give you an idea of what what it's needed and how it was um, set up. So anyway, the first thing I did was that I created a folder and then I actually used the um, cargo command um, to create a new um, bin package. And then I said I don't want to use source control. And then I... Um, gave it the name skeleton, so that's how I ended up with this um, the skeleton subdirectory. And um, then also to make things easier, I added three commands. So you can, I mean, of course, you you can always use um, uh, make and, and files like in the project, but. Um, as you see, I only have the uh, Motorola assembly here, so I actually have no Rust um, uh, uh, extension installed, so I'm just using the basic um, language coloring to um, support the code. So I handled the, the uh, to make it very clear how things work, I've actually um, created these command files. So if you look at, um, the first one is to build the package so it just basically jumps into the package um, directory and then it issues the command cargo build and then that builds everything in that in that package. And um, here you can run it. So it's also just to go into the current CD to the, and then just run the package. And then also added a, since there's a, we'll look at the source code, there's a test to find so you can actually run, run the um, unit tests. So let's have a look here. The source. So what I did is I made a actually from the book I I showed you I took this, but I just um, put every, everything together to make it more more visual. Let's see, I'm not blocking any of it. No, not blocking any. Of it. Um. So here we see that we have a main function, and that's declared with the fn. Uh, it just uh, uses a micro to print out the text, and then it actually uses this um, subroutine here, and then here you have to find a test that actually executes this subroutine with the um, input values and then an expected result. So I'll just say, if, I'm not, I'm not going to try and, tr and teach Rust here, but I'll just um, point out some highlights um, compared to other programming languages. So this, 
this here explanation mark is um, actually the indication that this is how uh, it's executing a macro, a macro to um, issue this functionality. And then here you see the data types are a little bit of its own flavor, the naming of the data types. And then it has this concept that if you have a parameter, you need to actually define if it's uh, mutable or not. And then it, uh, yeah, the assert is also introduced as a macro. And then as a, then the um, yeah functions are designated with the fn declaration, and then um, you can uh, define tests as you designated here with the yeah you decorate the code with this test, then it knows that this is a, uh, a unit test. So that's how it understands when you when you issue the command um, uh, for testing, then it knows well how to test it. So. Um, Let's um, run a few of these. Let's see if we can build it first. And then, of course, now you can actually in in this uh, skeleton package you can like add you know as many source files as you want. So that's as poor it would be expected so then so then these these commands continue working like the build will just build more stuff when you add more stuff and then the test will test so you can just add tests on the fly it'll, it'll run all the tests when you uh, and then we can say yeah we'll run it So you get the, ah, hello world, it works. <laughs> and then, um, ah, let's run the test also. Just to see what it looks like. So, one pass to refresh. Then it's got all the different uh, options, and then you, you you can add the same way when well, if you're familiar with unit tests, then it has different types of asserts, uh, macros for different circumstances. Yeah. So now, now um, so language syntax, basic functionality. <laughs> of course. Uh, this I forgot to mention. The, the, it uses this let keyboard uh, keyword to um, uh, define parameters. So, uh, as I briefly showed, that um, yeah, Rust in itself is quite a thick language. <laughs> but I, I thought it's always important to be able to um, get started with something basic. So I thought I'd. Uh, uh, when I was thinking for the idea for this video, I said, "No, I want to keep it really down to basics." So, so here you can see how you can uh, how you can create a, a, a Rust. Yeah, how you can initiate your environment. So you get the editor installed, uh, Visual Studio Code. You get the Rust environment installed, and then you um, you get a real basic application that um, shows you how to create a, a container, and then how do you actually get it uh, get build it, how do you run it, how do you execute the test to find it, and then a, p uh, a little bit of code which shows uh, at least one, uh, like you saw one subroutine and one test. And, and then of course it's, e it's much easier to then take this code and actually start expanding on it and search on Google, uh, yeah, search up. There, there are extensive documentation online, so it's uh, actually, uh, yeah, and one can expand on one's knowledge of Rust. So I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next one, and happy hacking by the way. <laughs>